This MFL Marmac Coach Conversation brought to you by Havla Tre- Check Trucking, Meyer Auto Service, and Burnow Chevrolet, where with head coach Dan Anderson, last week the Bulldogs improved to 3-0 with a 43-31 win over New Hampton. The obvious question to start out, uh, the first two games, uh, you win by comfortable margins. Uh, this one was a dogfight. This one a little bit of a shootout. But uh, your kids got the job done. Is it a good sign that you've been able to win different styles of games through the first three contests? Yeah, you nailed it right there. You know, it's good that, uh, you know, our defense carried us the first two weeks. Um, you know, we shut out uh, Crestwood 35 to nothing. And then against Wacon last week, we were up 34 to nothing going into the fourth quarter. And they scored a couple times late there uh, when we had some reserves in. But, you know, New Hampton, uh, you know, they, they were able to move the ball a bit on us. And they... Uh, we had a couple of uh, miscommunications and communication issues in our secondary, and they uh, we missed a couple tackles here or there. It's kind of uncharacteristic of our guys. And Coach Ferrix over there at New Hampton, uh, you know, he knows his system. He's been doing it for 30-some years. And so, I mean, it doesn't take him long to figure out what a defense is trying to do to stop you, and he's got an answer for it. So it was a bit of a cat-and-mouse game. Um, you know, we're jamming their tight ends and, you know, uh, uh, you know, trying to take away power and off-tackle plays and, and then they're running a really nice uh, option pitch. There's, you know, they're they're riding the ball to their fullback and getting your linebacker sucked in, and then they pitch it out, and, and you're jamming a tight end. You know, it's hard to to, you know, play play contain and uh, also jam a tight end and force the ball. So, you know, we we made some adjustments, but it was 21-21 going into halftime, and one of those scores was a kickoff return uh, for a touchdown, 90 yards by a New Hampton boy. You know, the number 11, he had some wheels. Um, our guys have got to get a little tougher. Um, you know, some of those guys were saying they were kind of tired and needed a break. And so we had a bunch of guys on in the kickoff team that hadn't got a lot of playing time and they run one back on us. And so, you know, we, we talked about some of these things that we need to, if, if, we haven't had a loss yet, but we did talk a lot about what's going to cause us to lose if we do lose. And we got to fix those things before we lose. You know, I mean, everybody talks about what causes you to lose after you lose, but we don't want to lose a, a ball game, obviously. And, and so we, we, we try to figure out what's going to, what, what's going to do us in if anything's going to do us in before it actually happens. And as a coaching staff, we're always talking about what do we need to improve upon even when we win and all coaches do that. But, you know, we talked about our toughness has got to get, you know, better. And we, we got to, you know, that's between the ears. It's not how much you can bench. It's, it's you know, our mental toughness has got to be higher. So, you know, I think the best way to do that is probably more conditioning and, you know, mental toughness is going to come from, you know, physical toughness. So we talked about those things, but I tell you, you know, defense really made good adjustments in the second half. And, uh, you know, we were able to only give up our starting defense, only give up three points in the second half. But it was it was the exciting first half, that's for sure. And it was 21-21 at the half. You outscored them 22-10 to uh, 10, uh, in the second half. Uh, you mentioned your starters only gave up the three points. What was the reason for the defensive turnaround in half number two? Well, you know, just, just some adjustments with our, with our outside linebackers and, uh, you know, our, our stack backers. You know, we widened our guys a little bit. Uh, you know, we, uh, like I said, we we had to play a bit of cat and mouse with, my, you know, myself and their head coach. And, you know, I told them we're not going to jam their tight ends all the time because we get predictable and, and they were trying to run that pitch at the outside. So uh, I had a, you know, we had to change a few calls up a little bit, widen our stack linebackers, you know, and and uh, I think that's all it really took. I mean, the one thing I really liked is the fact that that our guys didn't panic. They trusted our coaches. They trusted, you know, our adjustments. And when they came out in the second half, we got, uh, you know, we got the stop. Well, actually, we got the stop, and then we had a roughing the punter. They got a first down, and then they were able to kick a field goal. So they actually took the lead. That's the first time we've been down in a game for a long, long time. You know, I mean, been in the third, second half, we were down by three. And then after that, we scored 22 unanswered points on them, you know, and it really took over. Our defense really buckled down. Our offense was was hot all night. I mean, we never punted on Friday night. So I think we put up 450-some yards or of offense and never punted. So, you know, offense stole the show. Coach Pomeranning, uh, my offensive coordinator, had a great game plan. The kids ex- executed it to a perfection and run and pass. And so, I mean, the offense was clicking. It was just nice that we could win, you know, another way. It just shows that, you know, if you can't win with their defense one week, your offense, you know, picked up the slack for us and, and did a great job. And you talked about your offensive performance, especially on the ground, two 100-yard rushers. Uh, you almost got to Quinn McGee uh, at 200 yards uh, the other night. 8.3 yards carry, 347 on the ground, uh, four touchdowns. Uh, that had to make you smile at the end of the night, correct? It did. It did, you know, and, and Quinn ran extremely hard and uh, 197 yards. And, 
Bryce Radloff uh, has been playing wing back for us, but we actually are starting running back and didn't play on Friday night. So, um, you know, Bryce though, at wing back, you know, he's good enough to be a, a feature running back for any team, you know, but he plays wing for us because we've got uh, Wyatt Powell that usually plays running back for us. And Bryce is a different type of runner. Bryce is uh, smaller, much quicker, shiftier, you know, you know, he can cut, change a lot of directions and uh, make people miss. Wyatt, you know, can do those same kind of things. Wyatt has great speed, big, strong, and, you know, he'll run you over just as quick as he'll run around you, you know, and Wyatt's 215 pounds. So Wyatt didn't play with a, you know, he's got a hand injury. Um, you know, he's, he'll be back, but uh, he didn't play on Friday night. And so, you know, it was great to see Quinn have the, the, you know, the game he had 197 yards, you know, that's a career high for him. Bryce Radloff, 121 yards and I think three touchdowns, one, re one rushing, two receiving, you know? So yeah, when you can rush for eight points, some yards or carry, you know, a lot of that goes to your offensive line. I was really proud of our offensive linemen. I mean, holy cow, you got, uh, you know, Aiden Schulte in there and, and Avery Thornton, Will Howes, and, uh, Gordon and Deal, those guys up front, um, they really came together. You know, we talked about this before, Darren, that your offensive line takes a little while to start gelling as a unit. And the first couple of weeks, they played well. They did, but they didn't play great football. But on Friday night, they played great. And, uh, you know, Carver never got touched once when he was throwing the ball. You know, they opened up big holes. And in the only hits that Carver took, our quarterback took, is when he was running the ball. And obviously, he's going to get tackled. But when he, he was back in the pocket to throw, he had a clean pocket every time and he was able to make some good throws. He was six for 10 for 160 yard or 106 yards and two touchdowns. So um, a lot of that credit for our offensive performance game came from those offensive linemen on Friday night. And this week is the start of district play. The games count, uh, I guess, doubly for real uh, starting uh, tonight. Uh, you look at your district as a whole, your district as a whole, uh, 13 and five and non-district play, uh, I know uh, you probably thought this district was going to be pretty good coming in, but so far uh, your district is holding up their end of the bargain. Is that fair to say? <laughs> they are. It's a loaded district. I mean, so, you know, eight game schedule and our first seven games are against playoff teams from last year and good ones. You know, we, we were very fortunate. Um, you know, we made it through our non-district schedule against three bigger schools, Crestwood, Wacom, and New Hampton, three two-way schools. And, you know, we, we, we came through three and oh, I was really proud of our boys. Um, but now is when the games really, really matter. And, you know, you've got Applington Parkersburg and we've got to go down there this week and play at the sacred acre and, you know, legendary uh, coach, you know, Ed Thomas, you know, where, where he had that program going. And, you know, we've got Dyke new Hartford who went within one point of Grundy center, who is the number one ranked team in the state of Iowa in our class. So Dyke, you know, they, they're, they're extremely tough and Sumner Fredericksburg is undefeated right now. And, they knocked off uh, East Buchanan, who was the number three ranked team in class A, and we'll play them in two weeks. And, you know, you've got Denver who, who you know, beat uh, uh, New Hampton worse than we did, you know. And so Denver's big up front. I mean, they're 270 to 300 all the way across their own line, some some strong backs. So, yeah, our district is loaded. Um, we'll just have to take it week by week and, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be a tough one, but it'll be exciting. And, you know, we believe we can win every game, but – there's there's any team could beat us any Friday night too. That's how good our district is. And uh, this week you do, uh, as you mentioned, uh, head to the sacred acre taking on Applington Parkersburg. Uh, what are you expecting out of the Falcons Friday night? Well, it all starts with their quarterback, Gavin Thomas, who is actually the grandson of the legendary coach, Ed Thomas. And uh, that kid is, is really a, a talented quarterback. He's been playing for years. He doesn't get rattled. He's got a really a, a good arm, a uh, very accurate, and uh, he can beat you with his legs, too. He's a fast, athletic uh, kid. He's just an all-around athlete. And, and so watching him in the first three games, um, you know, he can win the ball game for you. You know, there's not, not often you have a kid that can, you know, win a game for you by himself. You know, football is a team game. But that kid is pretty talented. He can, he can make things happen um, with his legs and with his arms. So it starts with him. And, uh, you know, they've got some backs that run pretty hard. Um, you know, they're, they're not overly big up front. They're, they're, you know, somewhere between, you know, 180 and, and 230 across their own line. Um, we had, probably have a size advantage on them a bit, but, uh, you know, they're well coached. They come from a program that has got a rich tradition of great football down there. And I've never been able to coach against AP and never been to the sacred acre. So it'll be kind of a cool experience for me and for our kids, but, uh, you know, we're not intimidated. You know, we're going to go down there. We'll expect to win, but we know it's going to be a fight. And uh, if we do what we need to do, we take care of the football. 
We play great defense like we've been most of the time in our offense. If we're as efficient as we were last Friday night, you know, we believe we'll come out of there with a victory. All right, uh, Coach, hopefully you can keep the uh, winning ways going. Uh, keep your guys healthy. We wish you best of luck. All right, thanks, Darren. Dan Anderson, head coach of the MFL Marmac Bulldogs, brought to you by Havlicek Trucking, Meyer Auto Service, and Birdnow Chevrolet.